Welcome to KTB TV and more Kerbal Space Program because I'm an addict. Um, I wanted to take some time during my clearly copious amounts of free time to bring my space station home. And I was thinking, you know what? What would be better than landing a space station on Kerbin? So <laughs> I wanted to look at this specifically because I think that I can bring a Kerbal up and do some building. I mean, I've already got two radial parachutes in here, right? What if I were to bring up a supply full of radial parachutes and then um, just, just do that, do, do a bunch of parachutes and try and land this like a crazy person? Um, that's literally it. Let's try and do that. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna just shove a, shove a, a, a Kerbal into a tiny little thing. Actually, wait a minute. Who's up there? Can I literally just send a probe? Can I send a probe up here and just have an engineer on board attach everything? Who's who's my... No, I have a pilot and a scientist. Okay. All right. No. All right. So send an engineer back up. Bring some fuel. Do some silly things. Actually, yeah, do several silly things. Hmm. Okay. Let's see what I can pack into a... Let's see what I can pack into something here. Um... Um, what if I were to just shove a, di uh, a clampotron up top here? Um... Oh, actually, uh, let me put a, a fuel tank up here first. Yes. Put a fuel tank up there. Put a clampotron up top. Not, not the junior. The regular. The senior. Alright. Um. And then we put something big on the bottom. Not Kerbodyne big. Cover this in parachutes. <laughs> um, which actually we are going to need. Uh, uh, storage bay. That's what I'm looking for. Here we are. So what if we look in here and, and see how much can I shove into this? Uh, specifically parachute-wise. Songan is the wrong person to be in here, though. He's a scientist. I need a, an engineer. Jeb, you can go up. That's fine. Uh, okay, so this is what I want to attach to it. Um, I want some RCS. Hmm. And I, all this fuel is, <laughs> this will, this will be helpful if I, if I 
get up there because I'm gonna need to I'm gonna need to deal with stuff. RCS. Yes, this is the big one. Okay. Um. There we go. Bunch of RCS. Um. Can I, what if I, what if I put a nose cone up on this? Can I un, can I like undock this? Put a nose cone up there? Oh, actually I wanted to see, this is really silly, but, um, it's a giant heat shield, right? Is it possible for me to put this giant heat shield in inventory? No, it's not. Okay. And not one of the other ones either. Okay. That's. I wanted to check that. I figured that was not possible. Same with like lander legs. Oh no, lander legs I could put in. I mean, I shouldn't, but like that's an option. I should just aim to splash down. Um, okay. Nope, we're gonna do this. We're gonna see about putting on not that big of a nose cone. Uh, space, station, rescue, arc one. This is not a fun name. Go get a Matron. I want to see if I can just release that nose cone. Decouple node. Yeah, I can. Wow, can this not, uh, it sure can't. I just want to see the nose cone fall off. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that, uh, that poodle's not doing much there. Uh, actually, is it doing anything in the vacuum of space, though? Eh. Because I do need to bring some up, you know? Oh jeez, I, I get so much for that. Okay, yeah, no, that's that, that'll be fine. I'm gonna take these middle ones off. Okay. Um, I want to cover this in parachutes on its own. Um... just to, you know, get this, this taken care of. There we go. Mm, though I'm realizing that this may, uh, this may not, um, I may not keep this attached to the space station as it comes into the atmosphere, because that might break off anyway. That'll be fine. All right. Um... All right, decoupler, decoupler. All right. Um, what are we gonna put on this to have it blast us into space. We're gonna just put one giant booster on it. Just put a big old Clydesdale. I mean, that's not the worst plan. Uh, um. 
I mean, yeah, that's not the worst plan. I think I would rather have two, though. Uh, this is the Rocco Max to two smaller ones, right? No. I can't. Um, I can't put, like, the Rocco Max out and then put adapters onto this. Yeah, no, this is not going to work. Okay. Um, in which case, I could just put them on the side. Um, or I could put one giant Clydesdale and then put two smaller things on the side. Let's do that. Um, Yeah, we'll put some thoroughbreds on the side instead. There we go. Um, maybe move this up a little bit. There we go. Put some caps on. Put some struts on. S struts. Oh yeah, I hear that auto strut is a thing in the settings. I don't know where to find it though. Hold on. Oh, and I can't. I can't get to the settings menu right here. All right, I should turn that on next time I build a space station. Which is still the plan. I still plan on building another space station, but... Alright, this is really dumb, but here we are. Um... Uh... Oh yeah, no, this one specifically. The Clydesdale should be at, like, 30? Oh, 10? Okay, yeah, no. We'll put it at, like... 35 and then bring the other ones down. 60? Yeah, 75. Sixty-nine? Nice. Alright. Let's do that. That'll get us thirty two hundred? Yeah, cool. That these just a, a whole bunch of solid boosters will get us up into orbit, right? Right. Um, wait a minute. You are orbiting the correct way, right? Yes. Okay, point to the east. That's interesting. Is I slightly, uh, am I slightly, uh, no, I'm, I'm perfectly symmetrical. Weird. Just gonna see if I can toss this all the way up here without there being a huge problem. Marcio Dreyer. Mauricio Dreyer. Dreyer? Dreyer? Thank you for the follow. Um, let's see. Oh, good. And my TWR is going to be actually appropriate here. Good. Let's do a bit of a turn, because we can. And we probably should have been by now, but... Oh! Okay, so we're gonna uh, be a little bit more cautious with that uh, turn, I think. Oops! There we go. 
just gonna use that to fast forward just a little bit. What's going on? All right. Yeah. I'm gonna hit 200 around 5,000. Is that, or are we hitting? Are we ahead of that? Uh, 200 just before 5,000 feet. That's not bad. Or five, five kilometers, 5,000 meters. I don't know why I want to say feet. I always want to say feet for some reason. Definitely not correct. Oh, I do have, yeah, Tom is in here, good, and I do have all of the parachutes possible, good. TWR is only... Oh, yeah, no. I was looking at the wrong one. My TWR is 1.04. That's not bad at all. Especially when my APO is at 52. Oh, I am launching way differently than I thought I was. Though, actually, this should not be that bad at all. Because if I push my Apo up quite way too high, that's actually not a problem in this case. Yeah, just uh, hold on to Perry there, will you? Um, actually. Okay, yeah, not bad. No problem. Uh, I I don't speak I don't speak much Portuguese. Uh, wow, the uh, descending note is minus one point three. That I'm very happy with the orbit that I was able to establish, getting back from Duna. That makes me very happy. Yeah, my Apo is going to be plenty high here. We'll just do the best that we can with the Poodle, I guess. All right. And there we go. I'm actually just going to push right there as it is. Point straight at the target and uh, see how we do. Because if my Apo gets around to this angle, then I'll start burning that Apo to push Perry up just that tiny bit that it needs. Out of curiosity, is this pulling from here? It is. Oh, so this actually, this actually has crossfeed through all of these. Oh, that's neat. All right. I think that that's pretty close. Yeah. Let's add a maneuver here to, uh, no, yeah, that's the one that I wanted. Oops. Whoa. Whoa. There we go. Point to the maneuver there. And then we shall warp to the maneuver there.
I'm just hoping that the uh, amount of fuel that I have is going to be useful for the station itself. All right, Perry's out of the atmosphere, and... Oh, there we go. A little bit too far out of the atmosphere, actually. Use a little bit of that massive amount of RCS that we have. For this target, yeah. Try and match exactly that, uh... Ah. Got it. Okay. That's fine. Add a maneuver here. Oh, yeah, there... Oh! Oh, that's... Oh, that's so good. No. Okay. So let's let's start punching in numbers behind me. Um we're at 464. What if we go to 460? No. Four, 465? Wow. 464.5. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to be able to hit this exactly anyway, so... Um, I think I just warp to that and uh, do the best that I can. Um, oh, I should turn RCS off. There we go. Kicking out of that maneuver because um, it, it the music from the game is very good. It is very relaxing. I know that a lot of people put on uh, different music for for games like this, um, like especially because I normally stream things like Crusader Kings. Um, people like to put on different music for Crusader Kings, but I like the bass music in games. It it's got a great uh, in these sorts of games. It's got a great. Um, There's a good appeal to it, you know? All right, here we are. Let's try and bring that as close as possible. Oh, come on. Oh, all right. Uh, and again, this is where RCS is going to pull this even closer. There we go. Um, let's warp to here. Oh yeah, there's going to be a couple of really good intersects happening. Alright, so, if I point out the target... Um, am I going faster or slower? I'm, I think I'm going slow. No, I am going faster than the target. Oh, I should point away from the target. Oh, right, and I want to line up retro and the target itself. So, if I actually burn here, this will push retro onto anti-target, and it'll get me closer and slower. Perfect. Uh, 
Though that does seem to be going further away at this point. Don't know that this is actually helping. Alright, point directly anti-target, I think. Ah, I see. I'm I'm coming in too close there. Got it. Um, yes, if I point directly at the target here, this is actually gonna gonna get my orbit just slightly closer. Okay. What's, is, oh, I'm inside the atmosphere. Shoot. Um, oops. Um, what am I up to now, Joe Fada? How's it going? Um, I am uh, attempting to dock with my space station to um, throw a bunch of parachutes on it and see if I can land it. Just because. Just because I want to. So, we'll see if that actually happens or not. Uh, 72. Oh, okay. So, let's cancel out of that warp, warp to here. Alright, there we go. Oh, no, 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 no. Stability assist, please. Also, RCS, seriously, you can turn off. I'm getting a lot better at docking, I will tell you that. Am I going faster than the target at this point? No, I'm not. Point at the target. Okay. Point against the target. Ah, there it is. I see. Point prograde in orbit for me, would you? Right, because, yeah, relative to the target. Aha, here we are, here we are, here we are. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, I'm pointing, I'm pointing away from the target already. I don't want that. So I'm slightly going towards the target now. There we go. It point directly at the target. There we are. Yes.
Perfect. Just as long as I can slow down before I get there, this is going to be perfect. There we go. Yeah, look at that. Hmm. Oh. Um. Be couple mode. There we go. Let's just uh. Uh, we'll just kind of push that out of the way when it comes around to it. Um, set as target. Control from here. Um, point at target. Let's see if we whack the uh, nose cone along the way. Come on. No, we're not going to get it. That would have been really funny, though. Alright, Geeler, are you good enough to just hold target at this point? Okay. Oh, shit. Bob, you can transfer a shit ton of science, though. I didn't realize that I had 500 more science sitting around in the space station. Bring you just enough fuel to get you into the atmosphere? Do I have enough parachutes to uh, really uh, make a difference? Let's save and find out! Ready for a good strong boop here? Now Kiff. Boop. Excellent. Um, shut down this engine. Pop it up here. Um, good. Excellent. Okay. I have enough shoots. Well, I have these shoots. <laughs> Just you wait. <laughs> Where's, uh, here he is, Tom. All right, Tom, you ready? Tom. Um, not quite close enough, okay. We can do this. Right, of course. Um, F, grab, perfect, yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. Can we get close enough to...
Um, I'm thinking that this should come down sideways. Um, just the question is what side should be up. So I think that I, I think that I want to, cause I, yeah, this is going to splash down no matter what. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a couple shoots on top here to, um, keep it falling this far sideways. Oh, okay. Can we, uh, about that, um, Both of these open? Yes. Um. I, yeah, I did, I did specifically look and go, eh, I'm not going to pack any drag shoots. I specifically looked at it and said, not this time, because, you know, oh well. It, it had crossed my mind, we'll put it that way. Alright, um... Tom, can I put this in here and maybe... No, not that, yeah. Put this in you? No, I can't. Okay. Um. Actually, I don't need this open if I've got this open here. Okay. The the one time I need them, I know, I know. Um. Well, I wanted to. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Alright, can you, uh... Yep, nope, that's good. Perfect. Just bump yourself right there. Oh. Um. It's too far for me to put them over there. What if I transfer, like, three of them over here at a time? Yeah, that'll work. Two at a time, apparently. Nope, no, 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 no. Okay. Okay, good enough. Uh... Uh... Okay. Now we go back, we grab some more. I'm remembering what um what side I need to put things on. Okay. No, 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 top. Um Um Okay. I think maybe like two Four more, just for my own sanity. Oh, no, 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 Tom, you got there. So many. Tom! Tom! Facing him the correct way will help, too. Oh, I can put stuff in the processing lab. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Okay. And you don't have one on you, because I can't fit one in you. Correct. Okay. 
so. Ah, good enough. Uh, there? Yes. Good. Okay. All right, you know what? That's the best that I can do at the moment, I think. Uh, Tom. 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 Um, okay, so let's just save here. Let's um, go to the top of here. Uh, Winter Retro. Pull in our parry a little bit. It should be good enough. I hope so. <laughs> Oh, I can close my, um, time warp is complete. Good. Yeah, I can close those. So, let's point out retro first, shall we? How's the wobble on this? Not nearly so bad. Bring that down to like fifty five. There we go. Then we point prograde because that will be pointing us retro when we get in the atmosphere. Am I gonna undock in the atmosphere and just let one of the command modules pop off? Ah, that seems like a terrible plan. Um Did I put a heat shield on that other one? I didn't. You bring it down to 60 and then gun it retro in the atmosphere after Appa, or after parry. That's not unreasonable. Well, I'm going to warp to here as best I can anyway. Yeah, I might, I might pop these off after these shoots get deployed. Yeah, here we go. Let's see, we're at 56 right now. I mean, this was never meant to survive re-entry in the first place, so... Oh, gosh, look at all this. I, yeah, this is going to be all my liquid fuel anyway, so. Yeah, I've got some oxidizer, but you'd keep it as one piece. Yeah, fair enough. Honestly, I'm not going to I'm not going to argue that. I mean, I think the worst case scenario is that the number of parachutes on here rip it off of the other one. As long as it survives, it's fine. Alright. Harry's at 51 now. Ah, yes, the uh, one nose cone. And atmosphere. Big star aerospace. The kerbalizing my enthusiasm is a positive thing to do. How's it going, man? I I am very clever and no one has ever thought of this title before, yes. But you know what? 
those Kerbals do have a ton of enthusiasm. What is it? Oh, I'm like, what is this that I'm approaching? It's, it's, it's the moon. It just happens to be like moonrise right now. Moon. This, this is my moonrise kingdom, if you would. I mean, I wouldn't, but if you would, the shoots won't rip it apart. I don't know, we'll see. I've had some surprising tears in my, uh, or at least hell of a lot of wobble. Yeah, uh, yeah this is, yeah, completely out. Okay, good. There's a ton of oxidizer in these two. All right. Apo's dropping. Only another, like, four rotations. The shoots won't rip it apart, but the atmosphere might. <laughs> no, we're doing great here. I actually did check to see if I could get, like, an extra fuselage or something to, or, like, an I beam to put here and then attach that giant inflatable heat shield over this. I mean, that would be amazing. But unfortunately, you can't uh, put put the giant inflatable hate shield, hate hate shield, heat shield as a um, cargo part. It's very disappointing. Really, I I I couldn't figure out how to do it. At least not with like the standard uh, cargo storage units. Right. Right, exactly. That would be, uh, I don't have a docking port on the bottom of this, which is what the problem is. And I don't think that you can, can you attach docking ports as a part of a, I don't think you can do docking ports as a, an EVA either. I might be wrong about that one though. All right, let's get out of this atmosphere. Keep this drop in. Do this 16 more times. Could use a claw? Well, again, can I, can I attach the claw as part of an EVA operation? Um, oh, no, you're saying um, put it on the ship that it would bring up. Okay, that'd be interesting. Would that be strong enough to survive re-entry though? Like would there'd be a lot of wiggle in that. I would think. Well, alright, hey. That's news to me. The claw <laughs> Yes. Other little green bastards. Nice. You do it with asteroids. Oh. When you um when you drop asteroids onto your planet because you're trying to kill the entire population. You know, like the dinosaurs. Alright, I know we're still really steep here, but... Oh, there we go. <laughs> yes, no, <laughs> to... <laughs> not to kill the population, to make money by killing the population. I'm a warmonger, you see. I, spell, I sell space weapons. They're called asteroids. I hadn't considered this aspect. Hmm. Let's let's think about this. No killing involved. Uh, obviously. Obviously. Gosh, could you imagine dropping an asteroid onto the onto the space center? <laughs> Just like right next to it. Just never retrieve it. Just have a giant asteroid sitting next to the VAP. Oh, that'd be amazing. Go sideways, that's fine. I don't care as long as you get in. Except for when you dropped a cro comment on the crew complex. See? See? It only takes one. One screw up, and then you're the asteroid guy killing civilians because you happened to accidentally drop it on the crew complex instead of in the ocean right next door. I mean, come on. How big of a target is the ocean? You only missed by a tiny bit. <laughs> it's the people that buy the asteroids that do the killing. 
Joe Fod has got it. I'm not a warmonger. I just supply weapons to the warmongers. Oh my goodness. Alright, thank you. Exactly, I'm completely innocent. Yes. Clearly. Completely innocent. And we're going back into the atmosphere. Come on. I was thinking that uh, 50 kilometers would be too, uh, too low, but I don't know. It might be... Uh, might be regretting that one now. Do a monoprop retro burn? I mean, I do have some monoprop. Is this helping? It may be just barely helping. Or I could do a monoprop retro burn just as I pass Apo, drop me even deeper into the atmosphere. And then, and then we'll burn even faster. Mmm, mmm. Except for that one time you strapped an asteroid to the top of a rocket and used it as an I <laughs> IPBM <laughs> to get rid of your Dunas surface base filled with kerbals trying to split from the KSP. I mean, now that one, that one sounds like you've definitely chosen your own, your own mission there. Alright, um... Can we warp to Apo, please? Add maneuver here. No, warp here. You were commanded to do so? Ugh. Uh, it's also reducing weight. That's a good point. By a totally existent person. I mean, it's a good thing the Kerbals also don't exist, right? Not just the voice in my head. Doing the burn at Apo will be more efficient, but that will drop me into thicker atmosphere at higher speed. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm surviving where I'm at. That's probably fine, right? Probably, probably fine. See, look, this, this isn't that bad. And look, like you said, it's making me lighter. Uh, let's get down to like 45. How's that sound? I'm realizing that I was definitely banking on being able to, uh, fall into the ocean, and I have no control over that. You wouldn't go below 45. Alright, fair enough. I'll stop at 45.5. How's that sound? Just in case. Alright. Um, and there's a planet. Look at that. Look at that planet. Even 45 is pushing it. Going. Without a shield and going 2.8. After Perry, you'd retro burn the lot. Eh, fair enough. It just, it takes a while. That's really where, where I'm at with it. It's mostly that it just takes a while. There we go. Look, this is doing perfectly fine. I don't know what you guys are talking about. There's no problem going nuke first into the atmosphere, right? Yeah, 
we uh, past Perry now? We are past Perry now. Um, Yeah, 2.9 2 kilometers per second, not 2 point out. Thank you, that's a very important correction. We have to know how insanely fast we're dropping into the atmosphere. Nah, this is perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Maybe I should be dropping in sideways, though, just to slow myself down even faster. Have you ever flown your plane so fast that it went on an escape trajectory from Griffin? What's a plane? I don't use planes. That's not how that's not how we operate around here, sir. 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 We don't know what planes are. I've barely even taken any aerodynamics science. Literally, the science tree is everything but aerodynamics is filled out at this point. I know it's something that I should be working on using space planes, but it's just it's so much work so much work everything must has right yeah no no ssto space planes i was uh zensei plays um uh has been working on an ssto to lathe um yeah he's 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 an insane person um we'll see how well that does for him but he's been working on that lately we we're uh, chatting about it Yesterday? Day before. Thurs Thursday evening, when I normally stream on Thursdays. Alright, um... Yes, this is the correct direction. Where's Perry? Perry is at 45. Um... Uh... Per Perry has not yet dug himself into the ground. Um, Apo is... Yeah, you can see them right here. So Perry's at 45. Apo is at 1.3 mil. So... Flashbacks to, to what? Trying to do a single, uh, a single stage to orbit? I literally did not even know that, uh... that acronym until Thursday, so... I'm not, I'm not very experienced with Kerbin. Kerbal? Kerbal. I have about 150 hours. That's where we're at. Come on. Now I really just want to toss it into like 35 just to just to screw with the people in chat who would have uh, heart palpitations. <laughs> Dr. Doofenshmirtz? Perry has not gone to fight Dr. Doofenshmirtz yet. Is that who's underground? I mean, he keeps digging these holes. And then he has to dig himself out again. It's a problem. Look, we're uh, we're under two point eight. We're under two point eight kilometers per second. I'm not a. I'm not going too fast. You're going too fast. Oh, though we're all also uh, we're also going up still. So, you know, like you do. <laughs> I asked you a question and you, I didn't, have, you didn't answer because Twitch crashed. I don't remember what it was. I'm sorry.
Oh, Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Is he the, uh, is he the underground, uh, is he who's underground, who's Perry is always going to visit? Yeah, what is our, what is our peak speed going to be? We are, we are going to be hitting 2.8, damn. But I mean, just over it. Yeah, look at that. We're no longer going higher than 2.8. Have I seen Phineas and Ferb? Oh, uh, after my time, unfortunately. I'm aware of Perry the Platypus, and that's about it. After my time and before my daughter's time. So, I'm aware. I'm aware that Perry the Platypus is a thing. It's about as uh, it's about as far as my Phineas and Ferb knowledge goes. Our Apo is below a million. That's nice. And our speed is below 2.8. And we are past Perry. Oh, the, yeah, Perry the Platypus. Got it. There, see? I've made the connection now. Does Perry does Perry dig underground? I mean, I don't... I'm pretty sure that Platypus... Pi... Are... Uh, water dwelling, right? It is now Twitch mandated that I watch the first season of Phineas and Ferb. All right, is it appropriate for a five-year-old, or is that too, or is that too, uh, too young? I know it's about that age, but it might be like more appropriate for eight, because honestly would be a nice thing to watch with my daughter, but we'll see. It was appropriate for you as a toddler. All right, fair enough. Totally appropriate for a five-year-old. Okay. I know that my wife has watched it because she uh, has watched some of it because she uh, she did a lot of babysitting in that era. So she is, and she's a child care professional so she's uh more aware of this than i would be you've seen every episode of phineas and Ferb. my goodness the si you've seen every episode of the simpsons why would you do that to yourself just like i hear that like after season eight or something golden age is over that might be wrong it might, it might be like season 10 or something like that, but my goodness, little Einsteins. All right, yeah, see, now we're definitely going way past my, uh, way past my era. Listen, you know what? I watched every episode of Naruto, even the filler, free Shippuden. Don't at me. Uh, that was, that was what I did. I don't know. Watched all of Deep Space Nine twice. I've seen every episode of Voyager and Next Generation, but not, um, but not, uh, the original series or Enterprise. Yeah, see, you've got a, you've got a much, much more, uh, much more, um, child-heavy, um, uh, media focus than I do. See, I, yeah, I don't do, I don't do most Disney movies. Um, like, I mean, I've seen just, you know, obviously from growing up in the 90s, I've seen all of the Disney Renaissance and, like, you know, the original Disney animation stuff. Um, the big names. Um, but I have issues with Disney as a corporation, so I don't go out of my way to watch a bunch of their stuff. Not that I'm going to not watch, like, the Avengers stuff. Yes, I get it, but... What's up, Jay Volts? What about Voyager? Yes, I have seen all of Voyager. Voyager is what I grew up on. So, all right, you want to you wanna do some math? Um, I was in, I want to say, eighth grade in middle school when Voyager... Um, 
when Endgame for Voyager aired, the final episodes, final episode, the whole final season, but uh, I specifically remember watching that during a live broadcast, and then since then I have rewatched the entire series. So, what is Voyager? Is Star Trek Voyager? Get your uh, get your science science fiction, Phil. Or yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, watch all Battlestar Galactica. Listen, I'm not going to be the most media savvy person. I like media, don't get me wrong, but uh, I don't have time anymore. Yes, Star Trek. Yes. I don't have time anymore. That's really what the problem comes down to. All right, we're out of monoprop. We're almost out of monoprop. We will very soon be out of monoprop. Oh, and we're out of electric charge. Oh, I should uh, I should recharge. And we're out of monoprop. There we go. Star Trek is a somewhat okay universe. Ooh, them's dangerous words, aerospace. Dangerous, dangerous words. Oh, right, Tom's been processing this whole time. T er, uh, Bob has been processing this whole time. Bob, stop processing. You don't remember how old you were when you that aired, but you remember the whole house sitting around to watch it. Your earliest memory of what you of w what you would be doing with your family was when a new episode of Next Generation would air. So it's really funny because, like, I, I definitely remember my dad. So my dad got me into um, Star Trek. Um, I mean, oh, I've seen all of Stargate, too. L like, l all of Stargate. Um, not SG-1 and Atlantis, and I watched the universe as it aired, but I don't think I finished it. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, Stargate. So, Stargate, we'll talk about Stargate in a second, but my dad got me into, um, Star Trek early on, and uh, as, as, as a young man. Um, I, so I remember him watching Star Trek um, during syndication. Um, I remember him watching Deep Space Nine, and I remember him watching Voyager. I don't remember him watching Next Generation, which is really interesting. So I grew up on Deep Space Nine. More importantly, I grew up on Voyager. Like, that's what I would consider, like, my Star Trek of, of what really got me into Star Trek. But, um, but I... I don't remember Next Generation on the air, but it and Deep Space Nine overlapped, and then Deep Space Nine and Voyager overlapped. So I don't, I don't know if it was just like I was too young to remember my father watching that, or or not. I don't, or if he just didn't watch that at at the time. Um, Stargate. All right. So Stargate SG One is. Uh, an absolutely amazing show that you should go watch. It's uh, got a bunch of like really cheesy effects, very 90s, but a bunch of them are practical. Um, and as CGI improves, they do more CGI. There was a uh, there was a movie. Was it starring Kurt Russell? Is that right? That might not be right. But there was a movie that um, that originally. Um, the TV show is technically based off of, but the movie was a very, like, played straight, like, science fiction action movie, and Stargate SG-1 is straight up, uh, action comedy. Um, it's not, like, it's not like, uh, uh, like, Super Troopers comedy or anything like that. When I say action comedy, I mean, like, the, it's very much uh, an earlier style of what you get from, like, the Joss Whedonized Avengers Marvel Universe sort of comedy, where it's like, the action is serious, 
and the comedy is sprinkled throughout, but like they also know how to um drop the comedy when they need a serious moment. Um I is Kurt Russell that creationist fuck from Growing Pains or whatever it was. <sighs> uh yes. Um by the way, uh Professor Professor Volts, it was uh Next Generation, I believe was I think it was yeah, eighty eight or eighty nine, um, to um to the mid nineties. So like I should probably have some vague memories of like late season TNG, but nope. Hey aerospace. Hey, thanks for the follow, man. Good chatting with you. Have a great e afternoon, evening. Oh, Kirk Cameron. Yes, no. Kurt Russell is um Kurt Russell's an action star. He's definitely uh as far as I know, he's not a creationist. Um uh actually, you know what? I want to I want to just see if I should if I should be pointing sideways right now. I want to just point myself sideways and see what happens. Um Yeah, no, Kurt Russell uh star of many many films um very oh okay yeah no it does not want to let me do that okay it wants to point me retrograde that does not surprise me okay um kurt russell i uh, again he he has actual like good action movies but you should watch escape from new york that's that's really like plays a guy named Sp Snake Plissken. He's got an eye patch and, you know, he's seen some shit as a black ops operative. Oh, it's, mm, like, real cheesy, wonderful B-movie stuff. Yeah, that's, that's the good, that's the good stuff. You remember your father, uh, you remember your father and you were very into X-Files from the first season. Yeah, so that was, again, I, I, I know that X-Files was, like, a little creepier. Um, I don't know if that's why we never really got into it um is just like if like my mother didn't think it was appropriate for me or anything or if my father just wasn't into it um cuz again it's you know this wasn't really us spending time together this was my dad was watching TV and I was in the room um so I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily call it like bonding time or anything uh but it's just what my father happened to be into so i never really uh never really got into x files that's something that i just haven't had a a drive to do i mean like i feel like i feel like it's like x files like the twilight zone they're kind of like the sci-fi equivalent of like the Sopranos and The Wire, where it's like, you will know these, you know, you will know these uh, properties from their cultural impact. Um, and, like, they are massively important, but at the same time, I'm probably not going to go watch them. <laughs> Just... Again, it's 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 something about the 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 time for that, the the era for that, where it's like I I'm already into Star Trek and stuff, um, so like that's already a a part of what is in my in my brain and like already living rent free. So I might as well shove more of that in there versus like the X Files and stuff, things that were really written for syndication at the time, like that's there's so much to to deal with there it's it's going to be a bunch of like individual episodes that don't have a long-term plot now babylon 5 on the other hand now is speaking of like what what should i probably go watch that would have a long-term plot babylon 5 uh i'm aware of another you know similar era uh show similar era show uh you know of 90s sci-fi um that 
does actually have an overarching plot that like it it is actually going somewhere um now like i said i i have watched battlestar the remake not the original um 2004 battlestar and that's a show where it's like i wish that these people had really sat down and actually figured out who the final five were before they're just like oh well we gotta figure something out. i don't know pick like re- you 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 like come on guys finish planning your shit before you you know if you have a vision don't just give me the like surface of there's something going on here it's you know the jj abrams mystery box problem Ugh. anyway ranting Kurt Russell didn't just play a badass in films. He's also kind of one in real life. Oh, all right. Continue. He was a professional baseball player at more than one point, switching between that and acting in his career, and is notorious for calling the rest of the softness in the 21st century Hollywood for its bullshit, and generally not being a pretentious dick for being a celebrity. I feel like the last two statements there are slightly conflicted, but you know what? All right. There you go. Kurt Russell. The more you know. I, I mean, I know that he's not, like, an A-list actor the way that he was kind of... He, I mean, like, he was a he was a really big-name actor. Wait, was Kurt Russell in The Thing? Is that what I'm thinking of? I'm like, I know he has a major role. Like, a really, like, major defining role. Like, like how Arnold... Arnold's defining role was Terminator, you know? Um... Kurt Russell. Yeah, he had many. Right. But like again, like Arnold's Arnold's role was was um his 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 like breakout role, his defining role. Yeah, no, we're talking the um the the John Carpenter's the thing. Um I uh, his defining role was was um the thing as opposed to or I'm sorry, Arnold's defining role, defining breakout role was Terminator, and then everything after that, um, Predator, and, um, uh, oh gosh, why can't I even, I, I immediately go into, like, Twins and Kindergarten Cop, like, those are, like, the subversion era of, of Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, uh, all of those come after the, like, truly defining role. He was actually uh, John. Oh yeah, so he worked with John Carpenter a bunch. So yeah, Escape from Escape from L.A., Escape from New York, uh, Executive Decision, Kurt Russell, um, The Hateful Eight. Oh, he was in The Hateful Eight. Yeah, no, I'm talking like the earlier stuff. Please. Um, trying to pay attention to this and also look up more about Kurt Russell. Um, okay, so he had a TV role called The Travels of Jamie, Jamie McFeaters, 26 episodes, he had, he had one season, um, Lost in Space, a guest episode on that, Fugitive, um, Daniel Boone, as a bunch of people. Yeah, so I mean, like, he had a bunch of TV character experience early on, and, like, even as a, a leading man. I had the 39... Oh, yeah, yep, I, sh- I am hoping that I should be coming down this path. Um, it's either this one or the next one. So, yeah, he had... Oh, wow, so he was a major TV actor before... Before he started hitting, so actually, okay, yeah. So, Escape from New York was 1981, and then the thing was 1982. Um, gosh, I love the 80s. Um, yeah, he had a ton of, uh, a ton of. Oh, Big Trouble in Little China. That's the other one that I'm thinking of. All right. Yep. Oh, and he played Wyatt Earp in Tombstone. Really? Wow. Okay. Anyway. Overboard. I. That sounds vaguely familiar, but I can't place it.
anyway, this is just this is just turned into the Kurt Russell Power Hour. That's where we're at right now. Overboard is a comedy different from his usual action vibes. I mean, have you seen Escape from New York? <laughs> All right, unintentional comedy. Um, we're coming in at twenty four, maybe maybe twenty uh, two point two point five kilometers per second at our peak speed there, possibly. So yeah, uh, Apo is at one eighty five, and drop and continuing to drop. Yeah, we're definitely coming in this pass. Hopefully we'll be coming in here, but I don't I don't expect so. I think we're probably gonna drop somewhere over here. We'll see. Him and Goldie Hahn. Oh, alright, yeah. So there we go. There's another there's another movie to add to the list of things I need to watch. Alright. Now I gotta actually pay attention for uh, popping out these shoots. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're gonna chase Perry or uh, chase Perry all the way around, or if it's gonna drop inside. If we pass Perry, then Apo is gonna come join us. I think. I may be wrong about that. Well, let's see if let's see if we chase Perry or not. Ah, oh, gosh! Now we should just talk about Kurt Russell for a while. Other other eighties action stars. Because <laughs> seriously, his IMDb page is shocking. Yes, and yes, so yes, he played Jack O'Neill in the original Stargate movie. That's how we got on this, talking about Stargate. Um, yeah, hey, I was right. I actually do remember some things occasionally. Oh, Apo's inside the atmosphere. Nope, we're going to chase Perry out. Um, yep, we're landing on land. Damn it, I was really hoping for a splashdown. Yeah, we're hitting land. I wonder if there's anything here if I were to go there. Like we just have a a satellite or like a giant a giant dish sitting there. Um the uh the effects in Stargate? Uh I mean I've watched it relatively yeah, the original Stargate movie, yeah. I've watched it relatively recently. I mean, maybe within the past like five years. I mean, it, it's it's nothing amazing, but I mean, I think they did a good job. It's that sort of er era of like not quite switching over to full CGI yet, doing a lot of um, like miniature work and stuff. Um, it must be it must be miniature that they use for the uh, that they use for the spaceship, right? I don't know. See, now it's it's been so long. Okay, now we're starting to heat up a bit. Yeah, we're 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 crashing into land. I just hope I am going slow enough. Oh, actually, it's just the six inner engines. So that's neat. I wonder if I could, like, twist out of the way briefly just to, to let them cool off. Nope. What was that about drag shoots? Uh, that's not great. I assume that's shutting down. Oh! No! Oh! No, I was gonna say, I wonder if shutting down the engines will do anything, but, um. No, none of these, uh. 
none of those will be a problem. I, I just happened to slow down right before that was an issue. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. So we're gonna reload there. Oops. Okay, so what was that about drag shoots? Ooh, yeah. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, we were still coming in way too hot. Um, I, yeah, hmm. I'm wondering if I can just, if I, if I just play it more patiently and continue to burn at, um, oops, where are we at? Oh, whoa. Yeah, I think I just need to, I think I just need to continue to play more carefully. Um, need to delete some of these. Uh, 123. Let's see where we're at with 123. Because if I continue to slow down in the upper atmosphere, like really that's gonna, that's gonna be the biggest thing. Oh yeah. Let's warp, warp to parry. And just use monoprop. And yeah, push straight at retrograde after parry. Um, time to parry is three seconds. Good. There we go. Yeah, we use all our fuel to bring ourselves down to um, two million, and then. Yeah, and then use our mono pop to pull us in past that. And then Perry is technically dropping, but um, Perry is technically just inside the atmosphere here, which is good, because that's actually what I want. So if I use all my mono prop to... Uh, bring this down as much as possible and then burn inside the atmosphere there that should that should work curiosity what if I is this going to be better or worse for how fast that's dropping that's perfect perfect Oh right, because yeah, if I um if I try and go towards uh, radial out, that's gonna try and circularize my orbit, right? So if I if I keep if I keep staying right about here, it won't drop my orbit too much. The thing is, I don't want to circularize to the point where it actually will um, pull my parry out even more. No, this is not actually doing much. Okay. Let's warp to parry here, and then we'll push retrograde again.
Oh, I, uh... Bob, you can stop processing. You can transmit science. And that'll stop using all my electric charge, so... There we go. Try to keep half my monoprop for landing? Monoprop won't do anything for landing, will it? I've got to rely on the, uh... I've got to rely on the... Um... I've got to rely on the, uh... Shoots for landing. If I don't, if I don't get the shoots for landing, then, like, that's it. That's, that's all that's gonna happen. If the shoots do not help me land, then I just completely start over. Monoprop won't do much for landing, but it might slow me down for the shoots. Hey, that deep inside the atmosphere, I don't, I don't think it's gonna do much. I think I'm still better off using it now. Right, I've still got 900 seconds worth of burn for this. Though, it's also time for me to, uh... <laughs> be done very soon, unfortunately. So. As I can hear, my daughter has been up from nap for a while. And, uh, we're going clothes shopping. So. One point nine two. Yeah, this is. I want to. I want to get that as low an angle as possible. So, be nice if I could eject um, this oxidizer though. I don't have a drain. I should have had a drain on some of these, but I don't. So. Well, and again, I could, I could pop this off as well, and let it do its own thing. So, like, I have several options here. Let's warp to Perry and see what happens. Let's hit the atmosphere first. I mean, I could keep it at, like, this 4x speed. Um, I could keep it at this 4x speed as I go out and just burn this way, way, way faster. Yeah. Let's do that. I could I could drop I could save a tiny bit of monoprop just to drop me back into the atmosphere a tiny bit. 
on the other side there, but I don't think that that'll be too much of a problem. Yeah, I really, I really kind of want to pop these out, but... Um... No, not this. This way. No. Excuse me. Just get a couple of these on the, uh... High end here. Because that way, if we do, uh, if we do get to the point where my shoots will deploy, that won't be the worst. Yeah, no, uh, burning this is burning great. Oops. is pushing higher here. Like, am I burning the wrong direction? No, I'm not burning the wrong direction. It's just... Yeah, because otherwise this wouldn't be dropping as slowly as it is dropping. It wouldn't be dropping as fast. Save, like, 50 monoprop just for the, uh to drop me slightly further into the atmosphere for Apo. Yeah, we'll pull ourselves in just a tiny bit. Let's see. Turn our CS on. Nope. Turn our CS on. Get Perry in to 65. All right, we're in six. We're in at sixty-five. No retrograde, please. Point retrograde, please. All right, this is the last of my monoprop. Now we're just going round, going round and round and round. Point five million.
Yeah, I really do want to break this one off. Just kind of let them both do their own thing, but the extra shoots on this might be what saves us, you know? Actually, can you point radial out? Like, while we can, let's uh, let's try and do some drag sideways. You know, just point point in a stupid direction to uh point in a stupid direction to try and get as much um poor aerodynamics as possible yeah there we go So 1.52, we've come from 1.56 to 1.52. Really, uh, aiming for that shallow landing as much as we can, or that shallow uh, angle. Yeah, each pass through the atmosphere is getting me something. It's just not a lot. Ah. Thought I thought for sure we were going to get below 1.5 that that pass, but nope. 1.50018. Million kilometers or million meters, megameters, if you would. There we go, we are below 1.5. The most shallow possible uh, angle I could. I dared. And the good news is we we are dropping a good amount every every pass. So we're at 1.46, almost exactly. 1.46 ammo. So let's see what the next pass brings us. Uh, so, we, all right, hold on. All right, uh, one point four four, almost exactly. Okay, so we're dropping about um twenty kilometers every pass. Apo is dropping about 20 kilometers every pass. So, and that's going to increase as as Perry drops, but 
we actually don't want that to increase too much. So only, you know, 70 passes left, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, 70 passes. Like I've also I've also got this this facing forward to try and try and push that as much as I can. Yep, 1.40. Yep, two passes, 40, 40 kilometers. I honestly, I don't think that the monoprop would have slowed me down nearly enough. I don't think the monoprop would have slowed me down nearly enough to get me into safe activation range range for the, um, for the shoots. I think we're just at the point where either this will work or it won't at all, and I'm going to need to jump back to an earlier save. So, you know, one or the other. One way or the other. This really is going to take 70 fucking passes, isn't it? Yeah. Because Perry's not dropping. I mean, Perry's... Perry, Perry is technically dropping, but Perry is hardly dropping, which is great, but at the same time, I really would like to be through slightly thicker atmosphere. All right, 10 minutes, and then it's time to go. One point three two nine. The end of this we should be about 1.32. Yeah, it's just under 20 kilometers every every pass. 1.323, yeah. Just sitting here tapping the warp button over and over and over again. Gosh, I hope this works. <laughs> yeah, 1.323, 1.304. So we're dropping 18 kilometers, not 20 kilometers. And again, Perry is dropping just ever so slightly. 
for something coming into this versus 1.652 I'm sorry 6 64.5 uh, 1.65 not even close uh 645 point yeah we're dropping about 300 meters in in parry every time but which again is going to increase the amount of uh apple that we're going to be dropping but not by a lot 128 5 by 2 64 left I should um put these out. They're not gonna they're not gonna increase my drag at all, but I do need the electric charge, so good. Hmm. Electric charge is back up. This is where I deploy the parachutes in space, right? What if I were to deploy just like one of you? Yeah, it has a minimum pressure that it would require for that, yeah. Let's see, let's see whenever we, uh, whenever that ends up getting deployed. Just, just for shits. Oh, maximum altitude is going to be at 5,000. Oh. That's actually going to be a major problem. Oh, or is that the altitude that it um is going to like fully expand at? Hmm. Minimum pressure to to launch and then altitude to expand. Five. So maybe maybe right here. I don't know what these color bands exactly mean. One point one eight. But that way. Yeah, just right right there, right like that. It's it's getting there. Very, very, very slowly. We're getting there.
mean, we're slower than 2.8, right? 2.778. Technically slower than 2.8. Okay. The Steve Perry might have saved it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll we'll see. That's exactly it. Is is um, you mean like shallower, the higher Perry and like shallower, um, shallower atmospheric uh, arrow break essentially. Um, we'll see. Well, the question is. In the next five minutes, do I uh, do I actually get in here or not? Again, if I it, it, this does have a lot of shoots attached to it, but if I uh, just pop it off, it will be lighter technically. So, though, then I need to bring two things separately in. So. All right, 1.16, 1 1.15. I'm sorry, 1.115. 1 1.115, that's where we're at. Or... Our parry still hasn't hit below 64 yet. So, again, you know, good news and bad news, right? Oh! We dropped more than 20 kilometers. 115. No, we have dropped, again, just, just under um, 20 kilometers. Okay, sorry. So we were at uh, 115. One million and a hundred and fifteen thousand. Uh hundred and ninety-six something. So yeah, that's we might be dropping closer to nineteen every pass now. And honestly, this we can keep this up until uh until the atmosphere tells us we can't anymore, essentially. Seven nine. Yeah, still, still about eighteen, uh, eighteen kilometers. So yeah, the Apo Apo is coming in exactly the same amount, almost exactly the same amount every time. Still, so still at one hundred eight divided by two is fifty nine more passes. Fifty nine more passes. We'll see. I'm definitely not doing 59 passes in less than five minutes. I just want to finish this before I have to leave, but it's probably not going to happen.
Oh, Perry might hit um 64 kilometers exactly in the next pass or two. We get below a million. I think next pass is when we're going to hit below a million. This might actually land as it is. Mm, maybe. I'm hoping so. That was the plan. But uh, I didn't have enough fuel for what I wanted, clearly. Which was to bring this in way, way, way closer and not have to orbit Kerbin 70 times. You know? Alright. Perry is at 64 now and below a million for Apo. Nine hundred and ninety kilometers. Nine hundred and ninety kilometers. Well, all right. I think we're going to have to call it for right now. And I may be able to uh, finish this up tonight. Because Sunday is Crusader Kings Day. I'm doing it. I'm going back to Iberia in Crusader Kings. I haven't played Crusader Kings in like a month and a half. Feels like. Yeah, I've got to I've got to try and finish this up. Um later tonight. All right. Two more passes and then we're calling it for the moment. Cuz I have another 40 something passes to go. <laughs> I mean, I know once Apo stops being so hot, like, as it comes down, I'm going to spend more and more and more time in the atmosphere, even at, um, even at higher altitudes. So, uh, and so I'm not going to drop Perry too much more, but um, Apo is definitely going to drop faster. Yeah, so we were at like 9.55, maybe 9.56 when we came in. Let's see where we're at when we leave. Oh, uh... We were dropping, what, 18? Now we're dropping... 18. Yeah, it's still dropping at exactly the same rate. Or within a kilometer. All right. Um, I'm realizing I'm going to have to pass one more time uh, to, to save safely, so...
All right. Let's stop at like 80,000 on the other side. And, uh, all right. Well, let's see if we can wrap this up tonight. Thanks for joining me. I have to go clothes shopping. I hope you have a nice afternoon too. Or if it's a different time zone for you, have a great night.